one of the most misunderstood things about coffee is how important the ratios are. And by using the wrong cups, you're almost guaranteed to throw off these ratios, leaving you with a different kind of coffee than the one you are trying to prepare. That's why I've made this video to help you get the perfect flavor out of your coffee with something so simple as just choosing the right kind of coffee cup. I used to use this Kinto cup for most of my coffees until I realized that the volume that this cup can hold is different from every kind of coffee I was trying to make. And I see this problem in cafes all around Tokyo as well, where using the wrong cups can lead you to get a radically different kind of coffee than the one that you ordered. I went to a cafe here in Tokyo recently where I ordered a cappuccino and my friend ordered a latte. And when they arrived, they both had the same cup. So they had to tell us which one was the latte. This doesn't make any sense as there were different kinds of drinks, which means that for certain, one of those drinks was wrong. The same thing happens all the time with macchiatos and flat whites because of the definitions of these drinks and how cafes choose to make them. You may have seen some charts or images online of how to do different kinds of drinks, but they usually don't give you enough information to make these drinks correctly. So let me show you all of the cups that I use at home to make each of the types of drinks and how those cups help me get the perfect ratio every time. Let's start off with the most popular one, which is a cafe latte. This is a 300 milliliter drink with a 40 to 50 milliliter shot of espresso and 250 mils of lightly aerated steamed milk. So if you're using a cup that's too small, you'll end up with a slightly stronger drink, which changes the flavor of a latte. Much worse than this is when you use a much bigger cup and you end up having the espresso flavor completely drowned out in a sea of milk. This completely ruins the flavor of a cafe latte. And if I wanted just some hot milk, I'd ask for a baby chino. Now I have two cups that I use for this. I have my Loveramics egg and the not neutral Lino. Both of these cups are really beautiful and they have a really nice quality and thickness to them. It also really helps that both of these cups are designed with latte art in mind. So it's much easier to pour really beautiful designs on the wide brim. And also the curve is just right for the milk to go underneath the surface when you don't want to start doing your design yet. This isn't the biggest deal when you're a beginner at latte art because really you can pour latte art in just about any cup. But when you're working on a specific design and you want to do something special, it really helps to have this very wide brim so that you have a big canvas to work on. The first cups I bought for doing lattes were actually these Vardigan cups from Ikea. And they're actually the same ones that my sister uses in her cafe, the Courtyard in Papworth near Cambridge in the UK. They are really nice cups and they hold the correct weight for a latte, but I've mostly been using my professional cups like the Not Neutral and the Lavaramix cup since I got them. The next one is a cappuccino, which is also a misunderstood drink. Often I find in chain coffee shops that when I order a cappuccino, I tend to get a latte with just a lot more foam. However, when I was in Italy last year, I really enjoyed having cappuccinos every morning and enjoying that drink because the Italians really know how to make a good cappuccino. When I make cappuccinos at home, I use these cups that I got as a gift from a friend and they're just the right size at about 200 milliliters. A 200 milliliter cup is perfect for a cappuccino, which is about a one to two ratio espresso to foamed milk. Now the difference between the foam for a latte and for a cappuccino is something that a lot of people get wrong. With a latte, you want to foam 10 to 20% increased volume from the starting milk. But with a cappuccino, it should be about 40 or 50% increased volume when you've steamed it. For this reason, I often use a smaller jug when steaming milk for a cappuccino because it should only be 80 to 100 milliliters of milk and the actual foaming will increase the size so it fits the cup. If you want to measure your milk, using the right cup will help you gauge whether you got the right amount of steamed milk for the cappuccino. Whenever I order a flat white anywhere in the world, I usually end up with a latte. Now there's a reason for this and it's probably because many cafes want to offer you the difference between a small, a medium and a large drink, which you can't really do well with a flat white. A flat white should be served in a cup that's slightly smaller than a cappuccino one. And I found that this one from Acme is perfect at about 150 milliliters. Your flat white should also be lighter foam even than a latte. And so I find that if I do the milk right, I can get really interesting fine designs with my latte art. Or should I call it flat white art? 
This makes a flat white a stronger drink than a latte, but without the bubbly foaminess of a cappuccino. And it's actually become one of my favorite ways to have coffee. It's stronger than a latte and it's super smooth and you don't end up going through a lot of milk like you would with lattes. I actually had never heard of a Cortado until it was mentioned by a character on one of my favorite shows, Billions. I would love a Cortado. It's like a macchiato, but with more foam, micro foam, silkier. One of my favorite cafes to work at here in Tokyo actually does a really good Cortado. So I've been ordering it from there and I've been trying it myself at home. At first, I didn't have the right size cup for a Cortado, and it always looked a little bit strange to me pouring this into a cappuccino cup and leaving a lot of space at the top. But recently, I got this beautiful cup from Not Neutral called the Vero. This is the Vero glass, and it's the perfect size for a Cortado, which should be a one-to-one -one ratio of espresso to steamed milk. Look at how thick the bottom of that is. Since I started making Cortados, I always make them whenever I have really fancy, expensive, or delicious coffee beans, because you really get to taste the espresso with the nice smoothness of the milk. A macchiato is one of the most misunderstood coffee drinks because of the misuse of this word by certain coffee chains. It's a very small drink, and I find that if I order it here in cafes in Tokyo, that they will show me a cup and they'll say, are you sure you want this? It's kind of funny, but I can understand if people order a macchiato thinking they might get a bigger drink and then being really surprised when they get a kind of espresso with just a light amount of foam from steamed milk. For a macchiato, I usually go with a two to one ratio of espresso to foamed milk. So it's a strong espresso flavor with just a little bit of milk on the top. This fits with the Italian meaning of the word macchiato, which means marked. So it's essentially an espresso that is marked with a little bit of milk. Some coffee places will actually just get a teaspoon and put a little bit of foamed milk on top, but actually I usually prefer to use lightly steamed milk. For a long time, I've been using these really nice cups that I got from a friend as a gift from Vietnam. But recently, since I got them, I've been using these ones from Acme that look really, really pretty and have a very interesting design. So it's always nice to serve a macchiato in one of these. I hope this video helped you and now you know how to make your favorite coffees at home just by using the right shape and size of cup. My coffee cup collection is getting kind of ridiculous these days, but I have a really great excuse, which is that I do this YouTube channel. So thank you so much to all of you for subscribing and watching my videos, and I'll see you on the next one. So let me show you all the cups I use at drone. Uh, at drone? I don't have a drone. So let me show you that the cup uh, one you were trying to prepare. Prepare, 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 prepare. That's a hard word. Prepare, 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 prepare.